everything seems good to go so let's get this underway what's up everybody unbreakable fear is back finally a lot of you probably didn't even know I existed because I only have 15 subscribers and I love you 15 subscribers but yeah I'm back in the swing of things hopefully more often you know than not because normally I go like a three months uh, eight month period without doing anything but hopefully 2019 is going to be my year I am dead set on uploading so many videos and today's video is something I have not even touched that I never even mentioned today's gonna be a Tokyo Ghoul video and for example um this is gonna be a Tokyo Ghoul game that got uh, revealed in 2018 I believe uh, was supposed to come out in late 2018 never did and we've barely got any information since but it's uh, recently been rated I think about a month two months ago it got its M rating and that game is Tokyo Ghoul Recall to Exist and my just first assumption on this game I loved it I loved looking at the trailer all the screenshots that we're going to get into because um, as you can see right here, there are quite a few screenshots I've taken here. Well, I haven't taken them, but I've put them in these slides, and we're going to talk through all of these slides. We're going to talk about uh, the backgrounds, we're going to talk about the characters, we're going to talk about what's going on, and this is, this is just a predictions video. Since we have so little to go on on this game, I've just thought that I might as well put my hat in the ring and give my own predictions and kind of see if this is going to turn out to be a long video, a short video. I am on the edge saying that it's going to be a long video because we've got a lot of screenshots to get through and I'm starting to border on the realm of very long intros. So without further ado, let's get into the first slide right here, uh, Unbreakable Fear here, starting off with my predictions. Tokyo Ghoul Recall to Exist. Now we're starting off right here with lines from the actual uh, Bandai Namco Entertainment website with games on. Now you can check it out, there is very limited information so you can skim through it in about a minute. But here we go, um, the first part here is who will you be and it reads uh, pick your side, ghouls are investigators so in these uh it says later on there's a 4v4 type and you'll be picking either to be on the ghoul side or the investigator side each character type has its own abilities and weapons that you will have to master to take down your enemies now master can be interpreted in a lot of different ways like how my predictions are since you've got abilities and weapons to master i feel like there's going to be some sort of leveling system with these specific things like quin k's Maybe you've got to level them up and they can like do their added effects, different forms, or maybe you can just unlock different Quin Ks if you're an investigator. And for ghouls, with the abilities, with their car grenades, I was probably thinking the same thing. Like There's a level up system, you'll probably get added bonuses or you'll unlock different attacks uh, with specific things. Uh, continue on from there, uh, taking advantage of your surroundings and mastering your Kagune or Quinke will be the key to survival. Now this part I think, and what information we've given so far, this is my favourite part because it says taking advantage of your surroundings. Now that again, interpreted in so many different ways and it could lead to so many different things, is there destructible environments like you can break through walls at the CCG headquarters, can ghouls um, do what they can normally do, can they walk on walls, climb on the ceilings with their Kagane as like a Rinkaku user? Um, can you go through air vents? Can you just go through doors? Can you set traps? Can you just block off hallways by destroying a certain amount of concrete or rubble around and just walling that off for certain people? Again, it's so much to interpret, and with investigators and ghouls having such unique skill sets and unique Kagane and Quinkes and abilities, not even mentioning the Quinks core, who I'll mention at the end of this brief summary, even though I'm going on for ages, I apologize, but it's been a while since I've done this. But um, yeah, I just, I love it when a game actually incorporates its surroundings into the game mechanics, and at the end here, it says, will be the key to your survival. 
if some of you don't know or some of you forgot this game is a survival horror game it's not going to be a battle arena like jump force that failed shinobi strikers that had a good concept but failed black clover i wish it succeeded because i love that game and i love that anime but it seems it's a survival horror so it's a lot different from anything else and since as i stated before a couple months ago it got its m rating for mature which means there's blood there's guts there's gonna be no censoring which again does this game a favor in its production if anything <laughs> because tokyo ghoul is a very bloody and gory uh anime of itself and manga i guess i've only watched the anime um so there's that and definitely when i get into some of these screenshots i'm gonna give kind of my very own personal opinion on the survival horror uh, thing that they're going for, like how I think it's going to play out. Um, but now going down, uh, the next one is One for All. Get ready for fast-paced online play with matches divided into 4v4, ghoul versus investigator teams. Now again, that just immediately, you have interpretations with that, but it's more or less straightforward. There's going to be a straight ghoul team and an investigator team. You can't be Armon and Carnegie on the same team unless you're Ghoul Armon from uh, Tokyo Ghoul Re or Tokyo Ghoul Re Season 2 because we actually have seen that but you can't be an investigator and a ghoul on the same team so you're either going to have to be Carnegie, Toka uh, on one team you know those guys and then with people like uh, Ginshi and Psycho from the Quinks Court on another team um, and that's what I want to get into in just a second here but continuing on uh, challenge your friends and perfect your abilities to see who will reign supreme in a gruesome battle for victory now that end bit there uh, to see who will reign supreme in a gruesome battle for victory that immediately twigs in my head competitive gameplay like ranked game modes so you can get on leaderboards and show off like that you're better than your friends or that you and your friends are like better than a lot of these other people that's immediately what I think, but you could just put this up for anything, like maybe there's something like in COD, a final kill cam, where the guy gets to strike his stuff, basically. But just to leave it off there, um, I think that there could be some sort of ranked game mode in this. I just want to apologize if I swivel and stuff, it's kind of just how I talk. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel there's going to be a ranked game mode, and it does say challenge your friends, so I feel like unlike shinobi strikers when this game comes out since it is a multiplayer game it's gonna have private lobby so you can go in there host it and then invite your friends or invite anyone you want which will definitely help out i don't know if it will provide xp or bonuses in that regard maybe it won't give you anything like a lot of other games do but if it does give xp it should give minimal xp compared to actual on online gameplay i'm stuttering a lot I'm still getting used to this YouTube thing. I apologize. I, I very much apologize. But now with that being over, I can quickly talk about these two screenshots I have right here. Um, again, the camera is vertical, so if I'm doing this, I'm probably doing that, so I apologize. Uh, the first one, um, please forgive me. Uh, I've seen the first two seasons of Tokyo Ghoul a long time ago, and I've recently uh, just yesterday finished watching Tokyo Ghoul Re and I'm about halfway through Re 2 so I'm a bit late to the party so I know this guy showed up in the original Tokyo Ghouls and he was a prisoner in one of the CCG prisons I don't know his name but I know that guy getting flung across the map is Karnaki with his Quinke out now there's a lot of images where it's uh, a ghoul on ghoul whereas all the information we've been given so far is saying that it's investigators versus ghouls so i feel like there might be some type of there's either going to be some type of tutorial in the beginning where you'll have to fight jason you know yamari as Karnaki, and possibly this guy too just to kind of get used to the mechanics even though you're probably only going to be playing as Karnaki in these tutorials it will get you to understand the ghoul side of things and maybe you'll play as heisei I think his name's Heisei, sorry. Um, this guy down here. One second. This 
this guy. I think his name's Heisei. I apologize if I got that wrong, but maybe you'll be able to play as a tutorial for him, for the investigator side. Maybe there'll be like two different tutorials just to get people to understand the basic, the very minimum mechanics of this game. Because I definitely feel like this game's going to have a lot of depth to it. And now, since we're on this image, my favorite part of Re was the Quinks. This team was amazing. I did have trouble uh, liking uh, this guy. I forget his name, but I'm just going to call him Sword Arm Guy for right now. He had a Kokaku. Uh, Kokaku. Ka Kagune. That's what he had. Um, they're investigators that I, from what I understood, went through a procedure to get Kagune's. So they basically did the same thing Carnegie did, but they didn't become Papa Harkles, because we see them eat normal food. Um, but my two favorite characters are Ginshi, right here, and Psycho. Uh, Psycho, for a lot of reasons, because she reminds me a lot of uh, my girlfriend, Candice. <laughs> she is uh, utterly adorable, and I feel like if these two met in reality, they'd become best friends. Um, and Ginshi... I don't want to say a lot about Genshi because I don't know how many people have actually seen Re, but I think a lot of people would have seen it by this point if you're watching a Tokyo Ghoul video, so I apologize that I am a noob. Other than that, Genshi's Kagune, it's an Ukaku, if I'm getting that correctly, is my favorite out of, I think, everyone, including Ghoul's Kagune's. Is my favorite. It's just the way he just has this giant spike. It looks like a beehive basically on his back. And he just shoots these like scorpion prong tail missiles that explode. It sucks that they're not as powerful as normal ghouls because it kind of would defeat the purpose of basically having a super soldier squad to combat the ghouls, you know, fight the enemy with themselves, that kind of shit. Shiz. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, these guys are huge because in previous scans and previous like gameplay trailers, we only saw people like Armon and CCG NPCs with SMGs in the trailers and the gameplay. With these guys, it gives the CCG so much more variety, I'd say, because now you've got you got Armon or the CCG investigators with the Quinkays, and now you've got the Quinks crew that have car grenades that can, I hope, somewhat be on the same level as actual ghouls in one-on-one -on -one combat. At least Psycho, because from Re, Psycho was crazy strong uh, for how small she was. Um, but just leaving that there right now, let's... Uh, Let's get into the actual screenshots because this intro took way too long. Moving on. Okay, here's our first batch of nine screenshots. Now, first one you can kind of easily see here. It's a screenshot from uh, one of the scans of Psycho, right? And this is her with her... Uh, it's a Rinkaku with her Rinkaku out, and this is the one before, I think, because where I am in uh, Re2 right now, I don't think they gave me a specific uh, time frame, but later on she has a different version of this with a massive F-off hammer on the end of it, which I just loved immediately. So is that nothing uh, going on in this screenshot or other than that, right? Um, but then we got uh, these guys right here. Toka, Nishiki, and Creepy Gourmet Guy. <laughs> I think Nishiki was the correct word to use there. Um, but this is all their re outfits. And in other screenshots, like this one down here, if you, we'll get to this one in a second, this is their original Tokyo Ghoul outfits. I, I definitely want to play, if anyone on the ghoul side, uh, Nishiki the most right now because 
uh, just seeing him in re and how he just handed it to the Quinx core was amazing because in the original series he just got his butt kicked thoroughly every single time. So it's cool because we have different variants, I guess. See, they're either going to pull a Xenoverse and just have different variants of characters taking up different slots, or there are going to be alternative skins that will give your character a different ability. So if you're uh, if you're going to play as Toka from the original Tokyo Ghoul, maybe you'll only have a certain amount of uh, things like um, range, speed, stat-wise. And then if you go to an alternate version, you'll have something like your know, stats will be increased because it's an older version of her, more experienced and stuff like that. Even though she spent a lot of her time in the coffee shop. Um, so that being done there, the next one I want to talk about is definitely this one with Ginshi in it. Because this is the first screenshot that I'm going to talk about that gives us kind of like a scale of an area. Okay, so just first off, we have Ginshi right here using his Ukaku to shoot missiles down at all these unsuspecting ghoul NPCs. I'm going to make this a bit bigger, well, a lot bigger, so you guys can kind of see more. And, and this one's from a scan, so it's not the best of quality as some of the others will be. But all these guys are ghouls. I feel like I'm safe to say that in this assumption because they have the different hoodies. Uh, some of them are, some of them I think have masks, but why else would they be coming after Ginshi and Investigator? Because even though I'd like it if the Quinx crew could be chosen by either the ghoul or the Investigator side, they're more than likely 100% being just in the Investigator side to be chosen from. And that's why I'm probably going to play the Investigators a lot when this game eventually comes out. God knows when, when the release date. But just looking at this kind of area, this long hallway, I believe this is from a CCG prison, a ghoul prison. I don't know the exact name of the CCG ghoul prison. But as we can see, there's a lot of already dead bodies, blood splatter, and ghouls coming from very far away. So that definitely shows that there's some kind of, I want to say zombie horde mechanic where probably your best strategy when you run into a group like this is to fight them and not just run away because you could run into another group of NPCs and you have like double the amount to deal with and from what we see here they're kind of following from a very long way there's a guy there that's very blurry obviously this guy here um eventually there's a later screenshot that I want to get to because so far everything I've seen of ghouls as the NPCs, rather, they seem to just be basically zombies. They're not doing anything special than other just slapping or kicking or maybe biting, I guess. So that's that. And I definitely feel like there's not going to be specific roles, I guess, in this. I just feel like there's probably going to be Cargane and Queen K types, basically, because a lot of these people can take a hit, like especially the ghoul people, and since these guys can regen, actually I'll get into that later. Uh, the next one I mainly want to talk about is this one, and this one is of Toka fighting in a parking lot, and again, there is a huge area here that she is fighting in. you got uh, the other part of the car park here, skid marks there's actually a crashed car here and what's confusing me a lot is she's killing ghouls like ghoul npcs and that kind of has me up in the air because a lot of these screenshots have ghouls killing ghouls or investigators and what my terms of thinking is i thought the investigator npcs were on the investigator side and the ghoul npcs were on the ghoul side but I'm guessing not. I'm guessing the ghouls, at least, are neutral. Because in the show, there's different wards. Or in the anime, there's different wards. And not all ghouls get along. So it's understandable if the NPCs will attack the ghoul uh, player control characters. But even still, I feel like... I feel like this shouldn't be a thing. Or this is a very early thing. Because... There's actually another player control character right here, uh, down here in the trench coat, crouching down. It's a uh, Ni uh, Nikishi, 
I really hope I'm pronouncing his name right. It's Nikishi because down here it's the exact same outfit as his re counterpart here. So again, with this survival horror type game, just in these screenshots alone we can get to see very large scale areas and I don't think these are just going to be kind of arenas. I feel like they're all going to be attached somehow. So I feel like this car park, if I had to make an assumption, is just right outside of the auction that happened in Re. So I would love it if you could fight in this parking lot but also go into the building. That would be amazing, like maybe this is where the Nutcracker would be. And if you've seen Tokyo Ghoul, you know who the Nutcracker is, and I'm not going to explain who it is. Because I want to stay as monetized as possible. Uh, <laughs> Next screenshot we're going to talk about here is uh, going to be uh, basically these two at the same time. Now again, I don't care much for the investigator's side because uh, from the first two seasons we got to see the ghoul's perspective. So in Re, it was a bit of taste in my mouth that we had to follow the investigators, but I know this chick worked with Armon after the old doctor guy died after Toka killed uh, after Toka killed him. So she joined Armon as his partner, and I can't remember. I'll have to rewatch it, but I can't remember her using this exact Quinque. But this shows up a lot in the trailers, in the gameplay trailers, where. Uh, Carnegie gets grabbed around the neck and pulled backwards. Damn it. Right here, see it's right around here. We've got some CCG NPCs. That's a mouthful. And we can see her red little boa constrictor thing is wrapped around his neck, pulling him backwards. So... I won't lie, the investigators have, you know something that they can do like because um it's been revealed in, like some screenshots and a lot of uh the gameplay segments even though it's not actual gameplay it's those short trailers that a lot of the characters have super attacks well they'll take a bit of the action gauge and just do like a, a hit that i guess does a lot of health damage Oh yes, uh, this this screenshot is another one of my favorites of this next portion here. Uh, after this one, I'll briefly talk about uh, this one over here, and then I'll finish off with this one and we'll move on to the next two slides, hopefully a lot quicker. Okay, so this one like basically has like a story behind it, the way I see it. So we've got Karnaki, we've got Nikashi, we've got Creepy Gourmet Dude. Now they're taking out some CCG NPCs right here. And at first glance, you will think this is just like basic NPC killing, which I thought too. Like I exactly thought the same thing. But just behind Karnaki here, you've probably already seen it, there's a health pack. So in later screenshots, I think in the second slide, we're going to see a lot of drops, like uh, pickup items that you can use in the game. But right here, there's a med pack. So, what this is telling me here is one of these three is low on health. So, they're going to. Maybe there's designated areas that are surrounded by CCG guards that you can break into where there's going to be a stash of. Uh, med kits, grenades, molotovs, flash grenades, um, things to refuel your action gauge. Maybe there's going to be stuff like that. But from what I'm gathering here, Carnegie is the one low on health, just from how he's situated, kind of slumped over. And his two teammates have come in to kind of beat up the bad guys while he would go and grab the med kit. That's at least what I think. And now, uh, again, we know very little about this game, so I don't know if this med kit's gonna like from one HP to a hundred or from fifty to a hundred. I don't know the effectiveness of this med kit, but I can only assume it will 
just fill your health no matter what, so they're definitely a saving grace to save until you're about to die. So I definitely feel like everything we've been shown in the game so far, from what we've little gotten, nothing implied heavy teamwork like Shinobi Strikers and Black Clover Quartet Knights. Those two games were definitely heavily team orientated, even though when you played the game, a lot of your teammates would just do whatever they wanted. But those games would heavily team implied or a more mainstream game would be Rainbow Six Siege that's a definitely that's a heavy team work related game but here in a lot of these screenshots we see either Carnegie on his own uh, a CCG member on their own a ghoul on their own so I apply since this is a survival horror and it's 4v4 it's not exactly going to be like, oh, you should work together with your fellow ghoul or investigator to get the task done. I feel like for ghouls more than investigators, it's going to be like, oh, here's your team. Do whatever. You can help each other out. Or, since you're ghouls, you can just take a hallway to your left and do whatever the hell you want solo. Because you could probably tear through an investigator, from what I'm seeing. So definitely here, I think this is a de uh, teamwork moment. And it's team of four, and in all of these pictures, we normally get to see Toka involved too. So, maybe this is a screenshot from when Toka's dead. Not Toka, the actual character in the series, but I mean Toka as in the gameplay character. Maybe her character died. And it's just now 3v4, or maybe 3v2, depending on what other investigators there are. And maybe since there's only three of them, and one of them's low on health, that's why they're getting the med kit. Again, this kind of tells a story, if you really want to sit down and look at it. Okay, now the brief one to mention is this one. This guy, again... Don't know his name, but I do know he was like the underling of Yamari, Jason, during the first two seasons of Tokyo Ghoul. Um, now this is again, interesting. Ghoul on Ghoul fighting. We keep getting shown, well at least Ghoul versus player controlled Ghoul. Because I'm pretty sure this guy was confirmed for a player character, like you can actually play him. There's also screenshots of Yamari too. I don't know if he's actually going to be playable, but there was shots of him. Now, all these shots that I've seen, the first one that I saw was of Kaneki fighting Yamari, so that made me think that it's just a tutorial. But seeing other screenshots of him fighting Yamari's underling and the guy from the prison makes me kind of think maybe the ghouls have somewhat of a friendly fire mechanic. Like, if you don't like another ghoul, or you want to steal their kill or whatever, you can fight each other, you can harm each other, because, like in the anime, not all ghouls were buddy-buddies with each other, there were different uh, wards, clans, whatever you want to call them, and they didn't get along well, even though they were all the same species. So maybe this makes you think that there is one of two things. There's friendly fire, and if you want to be a douche, you can attack your teammate so that you can kill them or maybe take their items and stuff like that. Or there's another multiplayer game mode or story mode. Now, quick tangent, me preferably, I wouldn't want uh, an exact story mode in this game where you take away from the multiplayer stuff, but I would like an online multiplayer, something similar to Gears of War, where you can play through the chapters but online so people can come in and fill in three or two character slots and come to help you out. That's what I'd like. But different game mode would definitely be better, like a 1v1 thing, like in a Call of Duty. Ghoul versus Ghoul, Investigator versus Investigator, some different type of game modes like that. Because all we've been given so far is it's a 4v4, Ghoul versus Investigator, and it's Survival Horror. That's basically all we've gotten in game modes. Also besides that part, um, Challenge of Friends, Supreme Victory, in a gruesome battle for victory. So I definitely feel like there's either going to be other game modes, or it's just going to be simplified to friendly fire on that part. Um, now this one, 
can be talked about very quickly so we can get onto the other slides. We got Karnaki, we got Toka, we got Nikishi, uh, Creepy Gourmet Guy. Now I feel like this is the intro scene to a match. Like after you've picked your characters and the match is beginning, it's going to do something similar to Dauntless, where it's going to have a little cinematic of all your characters standing next to each other, and then it's going to either fade to black, fade back into gameplay, or the camera is going to spin around for you to then continue playing the game. I don't feel like this is a victory screen. Mainly for one reason, they don't have their red eyes, like their ghoul eyes, active. So it doesn't feel like for a victory screen, uh, victory screen, they would have them out. Like maybe their car grenades too. But as of here, they're in normal form, normal state. So I feel like it's just the match starting, and when they obviously progress and start attacking, that's when all their ghoul stuff will activate. So there, briefly talked about. I'm proud of myself for keeping that short. Next slide. Yay! Nine more to work through. Hooray. Um, first one, uh, I'm probably not going to enlarge as many anymore, but, okay, first one. Carnegie fighting Jason. This is one of, like, three potential things, because we have Jason showing up here. The main consensus is in these matches there will be bosses or mini-bosses that uh, the ghouls will fight against. But mainly I feel like they've only shown it with ghouls for the kind of nostalgic feel because Jason versus Karnaki was kind of a major thing. But I feel like these bosses can come in like Jason and they can harm either team and basically what you want to do is get rid of them as quick as possible because I guess they can be a pain. Or I guess when the game gets played a lot later and people get better at the game they can be very useful. Like you could lead them to where the investigators are either camping hiding or setting up traps and just watch the boss just tear through it and then you can uh, finish them off that way to be kind of strategic with it. Uh, the other picture here, since this is very uh, hard to see, I will enlarge this one. It's a picture of, yeah, three, uh, no, four of them, yep, yeah, because Karnaki, Nishi, Creepy Omega and Toka right there attacking Jason. So again, this shows that Jason is going to show up in the multiplayer game modes, but again it does heavily imply that he's going to be a boss, maybe not exactly a playable character. Maybe you'll be able to play as him through level up, like level unlock or maybe some DLC or whatever it could be, but this is definitely showing all four player control characters taking on Jason, but again we don't see investigators taking them on we only see ghouls in these things again i just think that's a marketing ploy just to show off ghoul versus ghoul and nostalgic feels and i also do think this game did take a while to come out because tokyo ghoul was popular when it came out but it's been a very long time since then i believe uh next one is uh, this screenshot right here of Carnegie in a hallway full of CCG members. Now this is great because it not only shows a bunch of dead bodies and the vastness, I think is the correct term, of this area that is literally just a hallway. Um, we can see a door frame there. We can see air vents that I think maybe some smaller characters or whatever can go through. Carnegie, for example, with these ceiling beams, I feel like he should be able to grapple onto them and just swing past a group like this. Um, but the main thing we've got to focus on here is there's a lock-on system, which I think got briefly mentioned during something, but I don't think it was in the Banner Now Christ thing. But this is a lock-on system, so you can lock on to a specific character, which helps when you actually come across a player control character, so you don't get caught up in all the NPCs running around if they're in a crowd, because one annoying thing about Shinobi Strikers was the lock-on system, how you can lock onto somebody, they can vanish, immediately your screen, your camera just gets flipped, and it's like locked onto somebody else and you get hit in the back. This one, from what I see, it zooms in and it focuses a lot more from the third person's perspective, so I feel like it's going to be a permanent lock-on to whoever you're going to fight. So even if, say, these two guys and this uh, chick right here, this is you member, gets in the way, 
it's still going to be locked onto him so even if you attack you're going to be slowly moving forward to that specific target which i love and again i just want to mention how big this hallway is and it's just leading somewhere so i definitely think for the survival horror thing for all these maps it would pay to have massive massive areas so when you're a ghoul and you're hunting ccg members you kind of get that predatorial kind of feel like you're a ghoul you're at the top of the food chain and if you're an investigator i feel like the investigator should have way more of the horror factor because they have quinques and thanks to the quince core they kind of have carbonates to some extent but even still they're human if anything so being hunted down by these man eating monsters you're not monsters i'm sorry my ghoul fans but like it would strike fear into you a lot more like maybe there could be some music cues that will literally just make you you know poop your pants rather <laughs> but i definitely feel large areas and with a specific lock-on system could definitely help out a lot in the game um some free things to go over here Nikishi just doing some aerial combat it looks like with CCG members whipping them with his tail I don't think every time I see uh, Nikishi in a screenshot he's always in the air so I feel like because of his Baikaku maybe he's going to be more of a maneuverable acrobatic character so very jumpy and very flippy uh, next screenshot you just got Karnaki running up to a bunch of CCG security guards we got one guy dead here with his feet um, I feel like this shutter door will open because why else would there be a blockade there? There's no reason for them to be there. So maybe this would open and this is what could lead into a room full of items, health packs, grenades, uh, action boosters. Um, next one can be briefly talked about but has something cool behind it if it's done correctly. As this, because one... The red trail from Carnegie's one ghoul eye is amazing. I kind of love that whole kind of aesthetic. But also, this effect around the screen. So, when I first saw this, this immediately gave me, you know, stealth mechanic vibes. Because in a lot of screenshots, we see Carnegie with his Rinkaku out. But here, he doesn't have it out. And his eye has this little trail thing. So I feel like when the match starts, nobody knows where anyone is. And if you run into either ghoul NPCs, um, CCG NPCs, or a player control character of either team, you're going to get this kind of effect where it's like, you've been spotted, you've been seen. Maybe you'll show up on the minimap for a short amount of time. So for a ghoul, you could do that to scare people and then run away and hide somewhere to get off the minimap. But this definitely shocks me as like, there might be some stealth mechanics somewhat incorporated in this. Because if it's survival horror, you don't want to be running around guns blazing all the time because you'll give your position away and you might get jumped by like three ghouls or three investigators rather. So maybe... Um, like if you're low on hell, you'll be able to get away and kind of stay stealthy for a while. Definitely that would help out and also uh, add to the fear factor, like anticipation. What's going to come around the next corner? Is it going to be an ally? Is it going to be an enemy? Is it going to be a health pack? Is it going to be a dead end where you're just going to get slaughtered? Again, like, I definitely think there should be a mechanic of uh, stealth in here or that could just be something like um, battle has commenced rather uh, these two screenshots down here will be talked about uh, briefly because right here we have a med kit again another room that will house a healing item and this one I think his name's Iota but I'm not going to try and pronounce his name anymore because I can just say that He's uh, Toka's brother. <laughs> this is go right here. It appears that he's killed a player-controlled character because one health pack. We've seen that three times now. But there's grenades on the floor, and what seems to be either ammo 
or the item that refills your action gauge on the floor. So, if this is something else, like please correct me in the comments or anything like that. I don't know how long this video is, I apologize. But, this has to be when you kill a player controlled character, they will drop everything they have on them. So like if they got two grenades, they'll drop that. If they've got a med kit or two, they're going to drop that and then you're going to be free to pick that up. But I also feel like if that does occur, then maybe the make kits and the grace should show up on a mini map that gets shown. And I know I'm using the word mini map a lot, but I'm just assuming there will be some type of mini map or some type of direction that you'll be able to go in this game. Because with how big these areas look, and with how flashy the fights are, how big some of the car grenade are, how uh how much area a lot of these super attacks cover. I feel like these areas have to be rather large and expansive. So I do feel like if anything there's going to be some type of mini map. Maybe even a compass or a GPS or a tracker. I'll take any of those. But definitely with a game of this scale there should be a mini map. And briefly how I think like if it's a CCG location the CCG side should start off with a full minimap and the ghouls have to kind of um, like kind of like in a Minecraft map with the maps mod like if you go a certain distance it will start uncovering or like in Terraria and places you haven't been are just going to be blacked out so that's how I think it should work and if it's a ghoul ward the ghoul should have the full minimap and the investigators have to walk around and kind of create the minimap of their own just by tracing it uh, by walking around now this is definitely helpful, this is incredibly helpful for people that still research this game to this day, that are still hyped for this game, that still want to play this game, because people that either will just buy it because it's an anime game, or people that have dropped the game that don't want to research a lot, this technically gives a lot of people an advantage, like, oh, if I kill this guy, I'm going to get all of his stuff, I don't have... Like, say, scenario A, I don't have a med kit, I'm on 50% HP, but I've just seen this guy on, like, what, 20 HP run away down a corridor on his own? And if you're playing as this guy, uh, Toki's brother, he's an Ukaku, so you have one speed and one range. So you don't even have to get close to the guy if he's playing somebody like Armon, who I assume would be a heavy hitter. So you can just shoot him from afar, and when he drops, boom bam, you just got a med kit there, some grenades, you could heal up and then just head back out to either help your allies or steal victory for yourself. And this will definitely give you a heads up, like in the game, just be like, oh okay, if I do A, B, and C, I'll receive D, E, and F, rather. Uh, and last one to talk about on this one, I feel like this one went a lot quicker than the uh, first slide. This one we actually get a look at the HUD, which is amazing. Now this is the screenshot which made me think fighting Yamuri would be a tutorial, because up here we have mission. And the weird thing here is there's a small little box. So either this screenshot was taken before this filled in and it actually told you what it was like mission, objective, take out Yamari, or Yamari has appeared, take him out, and that kind of thing. But it has mission, he's attacking there, so from what we see we can't see any other allies in this, but it's definitely the same area we saw earlier of all four characters attacking Yamari, but the most interesting parts here are the little HUD, this white line is the health, I'm like 95% sure that that's the health, the blue gauge is the action bar, and down here we've got the little med pack symbol for how many med kits you have, and obviously there's a little player scenario thing there with his his finger like that. We've got grenades, molotovs, which I can only believe to be flash or stun grenades, and this is what has me confused. In another screenshot, Carnegie has a 10 out of 0 here in the numbers green, so I'm guessing the max you could have would be 10 with his Rinkaku Kagune. 
But I don't know what this is. Is this how many times you can use a super? Is this how many hits you get before you have to retract your Kagune and have it recharge? Because the action gauge is pretty low. I, I don't get this. It's very confusing to me, but obviously Carnegie is using a super attack here. Or rather, Jason just used super attack and sent him flying like a ragdoll. But this is very interesting because we don't get to see the HUD for any other character except Carnegie, which I understand why. Carnegie is the Pikachu of Tokyo Ghoul. So you're going to want to show gameplay of him, his super attacks, him running around all the areas. Because I mean, it's not like anybody else has any other favorite characters than Carnegie. But you know, now nah, what do I know? I haven't seen everything yet. But this is this is basically just our first glimpse of a proper attack, a proper game mode, a proper screenshot, if anything. Because all these other ones are kind of like they either look like cutscenes, they've either cropped out the HUD, they've either edited it away. Excuse me. This is amazing because the out of everything here, the mi Jesus Christ, uh, the mission and the car grenade are the most interesting things here, in my personal opinion. If in any of these screenshots you have anything else that you want to point out that I didn't point out as much as you wanted, comment below, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like maybe there could be. Um, depending on how long these online game modes are or be for, there could be missions that show up that could give you an advantage. Like Yamori, if you take him out, you get you get med kits for all your teammates. Your action gauge gets full. Maybe overdrive for a short amount of time, like an overshield on Halo. Uh, maybe you get a damage buff. You know, for like investigate, it's the same kind of thing. You get like a Queen K upgrade, some level ups. Uh, XP bonuses, grenades, health packs, everything I said before. So that's definitely something uh, that could be thought about and expanded upon, maybe, if we uh, find out more about this game. Because other YouTubers have referenced this because they've made videos a few months ago. And that also influenced me to make this video because I like this game, I would like to talk about this game more, but a lot of people have stopped posting videos of it recently and I, I understand it's because the video is not like Tokyo Ghoul is not in the public eye anymore there's not new information to go around but still you know it's fun to predict it's fun to be like oh with this limited information this could happen this could happen and this could happen and nine times out of ten with a game we have very limited information on and we do a predictions with a couple of our friends or a couple of people Nine times out of ten, at least one or two things will actually be correct because of how limited uh, how limited the information is. And eventually, when we get more, we could just be like, "Oh, that's exactly what I was talking about," or that's like, "Oh, that's about you know twenty percent of what I was talking about, but it was there," you know. And I mean, definitely, if I could talk to anybody about this, if I could eventually get some of my friends to come around and talk about this, I'd love to because. A lot of these anime videos that I want to put out are going to be predictions and what if because I love babbling. I love talking. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by how long this video is. I don't know how long it is because I have yet to upload it. Um, but definitely like it's just fun to talk about it, at least in my perspective. If it's not fun for you to talk about it, that's fine. That's your own opinion take it. it it's fine you can even comment down below that this is not your type of thing i'll respect that but just seeing an anime game uh, or an anime that you're interested in that you have passion about or that you have like a thousand ideas in your head to talk about it's just fun to get off your chest and just share it with possible other fans i don't know if all you tokyo Ghoul fans are asleep or too busy at golf club but like you know, I'd love to see some of you guys in the comment section. I'd love to see some of you guys, like, email me or something, like, anything like that. And we could just, like, start talking. Even if you want to say you're commentating this complete garbage. Let's talk about that. <laughs> um, okay, final slide. Moving on from that large tangent. And we've got a lot of action-packed attacking screenshots here. Um, this is, like, the first... Uh, 
these first two here, investigate or attacking a ghoul, finally, uh, that's Armon if I am, yeah, that's Armon, he doesn't have, you know, sword hand from the Quinks crew. So that's Armon attacking some ghoul NPCs, even though this is hard to see, oh, this, this is the screenshot I was talking about in the very beginning, if you can remember that far, because I've been talking for a million hours at this point. But quickly, let's let's just investigate this. All the ghouls we've seen so far have been your typical zombie horde guys. But in this screenshot, not only do we have red-eyed ghouls here, there's a ghoul using their kagune. It's just a yukaku. In my opinion, they're the weakest. Don't at me. Um, <laughs> this is my opinion. But somebody. Finally, an NPC ghoul is using a car grenade because with the um, CCG, they have the NPCs. They even have Queen Ks. They have guns. They they have body armor. I guess that could include, but I don't think that would require anything. But they have weaponry that they're using. Whereas all the ghouls we've seen are basically basic zombies who I guess would hit you or slap you. But this image right here basically confirms that NPC ghouls are at least going to have some form of Kargunes. Maybe they're going to... Like, there's going to be rare Rinkaku users because they're, like, the most powerful and have the most redemption abilities. But I definitely feel there's going to be a lot of Baikaku and Ukaku users, which is the tail and the wings. Because they're probably not the... Well, I guess the Ukaku is one of the most popular ones because of... Uh, but I mean just like um, best for fodder enemies like if there's a bunch of enemies that have an Ukaku type that's a lot of bullets or RC shards being rained down upon you that will be very annoying if you're not say a Kokaku user who's basically the tank who could have low speed but again as it, I think say the denseness of where it is it's like under shoulder blade is like it just makes it the perfect defensive shield or whatever it is but you know Tokyo Ghoul professionals, comment down below and tell me stuff. <laughs> um, other ones here we just have of Karnaki sending people flying, Karnaki stabbing CCG members that most likely deserve it. Um, teamwork going here on just one NPC. I assume that's an NPC. We've got Toka and... Carnegie here. If I enlarge it, there is a bit of Nikishi's blue tail, so maybe uh, he's included in this fight too. See right there, and I think you can see kind of legs behind him too. But I think that's the tip of his blue tail before the uh, like two year time skip of whatever it was before he got the really cool you know tail. Um, but yeah, maybe they're all attacking this NPC, and he doesn't look like anybody in particular. I mean, maybe that's Armon and Suit. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but I don't know why they'd all be attacking this random NPC. And here's another thing that I just want to mention. Like, we've got the like side effects here for attack, or maybe they've just killed someone and there's a little animation there, but look! You, staircases. Look at that. This is this has to be the CCG ghoul prison. And if you're kind of thinking, oh, these could just be off bound by invisible walls, this staircase is incredibly close. And even if you can't get all the way up there, it seems like you can get on a second level. Like definitely focusing on here. And again, this is why I stress like for a game to have something this big and not be like something like Monster Hunter World is incredible. And going back to what is stated in the very first slide, fast-paced online play, which means multiple different things. It can mean, but the main thing that it probably does mean is the game's going to run smoothly with so many NPCs, some particle effects, attacks going on at all the same time. Now, this one definitely seems like a older screenshot because Kaneki's Kanuge is... Kahune is not looking too hot. <laughs> it's looking a bit sick there in this kind of animation. So maybe this was an earlier scene because 
Carnegie's Kagune looks a lot better in some other screenshots. But this could be an early build, like an early area. Because, I'll tell you what. If I can literally go from point A all the way to point, you know, Z up there. That's just enough for me to buy the game immediately. Like, exploration... Just the fact of it's, it's a survival horror game, it's 4v4, but the maps are so huge. So, like, you could be talking with your friend in, like, Xbox, well, not Xbox chat, because it's not coming to Xbox for some reason, but in, like, PlayStation chat or on Discord, you're going to turn the corner, and there's, like, a butt-ton of investigators or, like, a couple ghouls, and, like, you just turn around and just both you would scream. <laughs> Because you have no idea where anyone's going to be in this huge map. And we've seen a lot of CCG places. And in the very first screenshot, let me just quickly go back to this. This is a rooftop. There's the sky, the stars. This is a rooftop. So this is on top of some place. I feel like this is taking place in the same place Toka was fighting those guys in the parking lot. So again, I feel like this could be the auction house. Or the auction building, because it's not exactly a house, it's like a 50 story building. Um, but I don't feel this could be taking place in the same area, which would be very interesting indeed to watch. But definitely, just if the maps can be explored, like as I'm looking at them here, I'm going to buy the game. Um, this game is amazing from what it looks like, from what it's shown, from what the characters are, and what the characters that have been revealed. That's just enough for me to buy the game right there. That, that's literally what it is. And other shots, we just got Toka taking out some CCG guys, grapple around the neck, on um, this one, with J uh, another one with Jason again fighting Carnegie, and this door here has red lights, so I'm assuming you can't go through that door, or you can't go through that door when Jason or a boss is active, like maybe a lockdown procedure will happen since this is a CCG layer. Um, with that being said, uh, uh, time to get on to my final uh, thoughts of this entire scenario here. And basically just what that is, is this game looks amazing. It's separating itself from all the other anime games that came out. Um, side note, I do really hope Black Clover comes out with another game eventually on the consoles. Um, but anyway, um, this game is setting itself apart from all the types of anime games, setting itself in this horror genre. With the amount of characters revealed, uh, shown, the expansiveness of the maps, uh, with all those NPCs running around, this definitely seems like a game that has a lot of content to give. Like, it's, like within your first month playing it, you're not going to get bored and quit. I mean, definitely if there's specific character leveling up, like, each individual character has their own XP, so, like, if you play as Psycho for one match, you get up to, like, level 3, and then you play as Ginshi, he's, like, level 0, so you got to level him up, and maybe you can unlock uh, different abilities, you can get stronger, oh, your health has been increased by plus 10, your action gauge, plus 10, all that kind of stuff, I would love it if that was a thing. And especially with the mastering your abilities, like, so, at least for the ghouls and the quinxes, I definitely see that referring to them being able to level up their kagunes, uh, their rinkakus, their kokakus, their ukakus, and their baikakus, to some extent. I want to take this to a game that I can reference that I don't think a lot of you either played or you might not get a lot of connections with, but Friday the 13th I think would be a great comparison for this game, because even though that game isn't being updated anymore and it's kind of dead, I mean I still play it, there's a lot of players still playing it, but that is a great horror survival type of game where the maps are relatively big compared to your counselor who's running around you can you can hide in the houses, you can you could get in a car and drive away, you can get in a boat, you can swim, you can set bear traps, you can pick up items like a shotgun and a flare gun, a baseball bat, a bloody crowbar. And that game with its music shocks fear into you, like if you're not playing as Jason, 
it will terrify you if you're on your own. If you're with a bunch of other counselors, you can fend him off because you have strength in numbers and you can stun him, you can kill him to some extent, but if like you're on your own, you're terrified because you're just a counselor, you're just a human, you're just a teenager, and this monster, this thing from hell that just doesn't seem to die, is coming after you, it's breaking through walls, doors, shattering windows, you've seen it decapitate a few of your friends along the way, it's it strikes your injury if you're on your own. I feel like that should contrast some way to this game. Whereas if you go off on your own as an investigator, or to a lesser extent as a ghoul, you should be somewhat afraid. Maybe not in your first couple of matches because you're just getting used to it, but when you know how the game kind of goes, and maybe if you see some recurring people in your lobby, like, oh, I know that guy, he plays Armon, he's pretty, you know, dangerous. Or this guy plays Carnaki, he's mainstream, but I mean... Carnegie players are kind of, you know, the the thing right now, I guess, kind of like in Fortnite, when, they, when you pick like a soccer skin, you're a sweaty tryhard, whatever that means, but definitely like, and when you're palling around with your friends, you should, you should have a lot more confidence, like if the four of you are together, like, um, Armon, Psycho, Ginshi, Takahashi, I feel like he used to be an investigator, I know he's a ghoul now, but I feel like Takahashi, he had the brown hair. Um, Takahashi, like, you guys are all rocking together and there's just, uh, and the ghouls have split up down different corridors. You're going to be a lot more confident together, whether alone. Like, if you were to be alone, you're going to be terrified more about dying, hindering your team, not getting objectives done. You might get angry that you don't have the highest score. But if you're palling around with your friends, or at least the Brandon, you know that one, you have meat shields. Two, you have a better chance of killing a player if they come across your path with joint effort. Or three, you can leave them to die and live to fight another day. <laughs> to, to end it off, I definitely want to say I'm going to buy this game. When it comes out, I'm going to buy it. I need to see more for it to inspire me to pre-order it. That's, that's literally where I stand right now. I'm going to buy it on release day, release week. Because I want to be within that first batch of people that play this game. I don't want to be left behind. I definitely want to be. I want to be one of the OGs that plays this game. I'm going to be playing as Kinshi. My girlfriend's going to play as Psycho on the investigator side. Uh, on the ghoul side, she's probably going to play as Toka to keep distance from people. And I'm going to. I'm going to play as Nikishi just to smack people with my tail. Um. And I guess if you just kind of want to hear about it, um, I feel like there are going to be skins and possible DLC characters because we've seen Tokyo Ghoul and then two-year time skip Tokyo Ghoul characters designs. I definitely feel like there are going to be there are going to be skins or there's just going to be different characters to fill up slots. And to make a comparison, if you play an online anime game, I feel like the online multiplayer should play, or at least when you're picking your character in the PvP setting, should be similar to Fatal Bullet, and not the dungeon mode, because that's terrible, but I'm talking about uh, when you play the cast of characters, there's four of you, you pick either Klein, Kirito, Leifa, Asuna, and the other team has the same amount of characters, but they pick them too, so maybe two Kleins will fight against each other. Preferably, that's who I played a lot in Fatal Bullet, I played Klein a lot, and if any of you know anybody that used Klein and destroyed people in that game, that was me. Hello. <laughs> he had a broken ability. But I feel like that's how it should play. Like, for the investigator side, you have a full list of, like, maybe three lines of, like, six, maybe even seven characters going down of, like, investigators. And the same with ghouls, six, seven lines going down three, like, of all these ghoul characters. Because we have a lot of characters that we could play as. And that's where Shinobi Strikers failed. There was a lot of jutsu in the anime and manga. There was a lot of characters, but they gave us minimal things, very little. So I definitely feel Tokyo Ghoul is taking a very long time to come out because it wants to make sure it gets its genre right, the survival horror. It wants to get its gameplay right. It wants to get um, any kind of bugs and lag fixed. And it definitely wants to just deliver with 
a lot of playable content to its fans because even though it's taken a lot to come out there's a few people that like this game there's a few people that react to this game i think there was one guy like i saw his video i think it was about like a week or so ago that he finally saw the gameplay trailer and he was like this looks sick and i agree with him this game looks sick i'm gonna play the hell out of this game i'm gonna play it i'm gonna play it till death i'm gonna play it until i die like <laughs> It is just, an, um, it, it's an amazing concept, and I'm glad Tokyo Ghoul's getting a good anime game. I know there's a couple phone games out there, and there's maybe some Tokyo Ghoul games that were only released in Japan, but this is a good anime game from what I've seen. Like, One Piece World Seeker, I was hyped for that game. But it didn't deliver on a lot, but the game looks beautiful. Um, Fatal Bullet, that was good. But just the fact that it was mainly a story-driven game and the multiplayer was very lacking, that killed me of it. I eventually sold my Fatal Bullet copy. But this game seems like you're going to have a lot of fun, you're going to make a lot of friends, you're going to have a lot to play around with, and you're going to have a lot to work around with. Because from that first line saying that, you know, a uh, uh, way to gruesome victory, if there is a competitive mode, that's going to get a lot of other people in. They're going to play casual or to find out who their favorite character is, who works well for them, on what team, so then they can specifically build that character. Like, you're going to have fans of the show that are going to come in and play as their favorite character, but maybe that character doesn't suit their play style in that game, and they'll branch off to other characters, and they'll just experience a lot more. And for people that haven't even seen Tokyo Ghoul that just pick it up as an anime game, playing this game is probably going to get them to watch the series, or at least the first season of Tokyo Ghoul, just to see how it is. Um, with that out of the way, the long final thoughts tangent, I'm going to buy this game. And I hope I see a lot more videos come out of just people predicting this. Like, just be like, oh, here are my predictions, here's my personal thoughts of what's going to occur. Because I love hearing other people's opinions, because it makes me think too. It makes me think like, oh yeah, this could be a thing, or that could be a thing, and then this could come off of it. It's like, it's a happy little circle, it's a repetitive cycle that will just keep people thinking and will make sure the hype of this game doesn't die down this game doesn't go dead so maybe they could cancel it later in the future but that's what i think i want to know what you think comment below please subscribe even if it's just one of you i want to see it go from 15 to 16 thank you so much for watching however long this video is i apologize if it's like an hour long i'm sorry and this is a video i'm doing myself so there's not going to be edits there's not going to be heavy edits because my girlfriend's currently asleep because she's in America and we're talking about other videos right now but I still wanted to get something out for you while I had Tokyo Ghoul in my head while I had the passion to talk about it I had the blabber mouth where I could just go on for ages now if you don't like long videos like this I'll try and make them shorter if you do like long videos like this thank you I talk a lot <laughs> with that being said Unbreakable Fear, signing out. Peace, everybody.